Hey guys, John Adams, Modern Design Aquascaping. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, waterfalls, and splash pads. My goal is to educate and inspire the world about ponds and water features. Today's video is, in reality, the first segment of the creation of our oasis here at Modern Design. But what you're going to get is a two-part video on the splash pad. First part, first segment of the video is kind of a breeze through that shows you the after footage and how it looks and how it works and a quick step-by-step -step of how we built it. Then you're going to get into the more nitty-gritty how-to. It's early on in my filming career so it's not real easy to watch not definitely not my best performance but there is a ton of gold nuggets in there if you're interested in how to do a splash pad at the end i'm going to spend a little time telling you some details about how we made these custom vaults and i'm also going to share with you the lessons that i learned the most important thing that i would do differently if i could do it over again and that my friends is a gold nugget all of its own appreciate you hanging out enjoy the show john g out hey john adams with modern design i just wanted to uh give you a little background information on this patio that we've built at my house so it started out as what, am, what is going to be my first water feature that I actually build at my home. 20 years after I started my business, I figured finally I should have a waterfall. Something more interactive for the grandkids was, was the goal since we have seven of those. So splash pad, that was the first word that came out of somebody's mouth. So away we go. Let's design a splash pad. So we took our knowledge of rainwater harvesting and our knowledge of building basins and all of the things that we've done and we mixed all these technologies together, if you will and create splash pads. So there's a lot that went into it. The goal is 5,000 gallons of water hiding underneath the patio. We want it to be beautiful, magical, mysterious. No pumps, no technology showing anywhere. Just really, we wanted it to look kind of old world, cobblestone-y with bubbling fountains. We wanted to have the freedom to create something where the kids could come out here and they can play and have a great time. It looks fantastic. It works with mother nature and it still shows off our ability to be creative, artistic water feature people. It, it all gets torn out in the beginning. We use our same pondless waterfall construction materials, if you will, underneath. The whole thing has a big liner under it. It's all protected with underlayment. And then it's just a boatload of gravel. We start out with bigger gravel and we get it all laid out and then we go to a smaller aggregate. We use compaction equipment and we compact it as we go. It doesn't become solid like it would in a road base, but it, it fills in the voids and it vibrates it in where it doesn't settle too much in the future. And we do that layer by layer. Some of the areas in here only have 16 inches of gravel, other areas in here have 36 inches of gravel. We set this massive boulder in that, that I'm sitting on right now, um, 12 feet long of a mountain stone boulder right here. And it's just absolutely awesome. This thing I've been saving for a dozen years out in the woods for just such a project. And it was almost five tons. So it took a pretty pretty big machine to set this guy in here. Um, the fountains were set on top. We did custom vaults for our pumps. The cords come out of the wall over here to the side. You can't even see them unless you walk around the side yard, which is cool, exactly what we were looking for. We, we side drilled the fountains and recessed LED lighting inside the column of water. So at nighttime it just bubbles and it just glows, but you never see any lighting fixtures or features anywhere during the daytime you don't know it's there and then all of a sudden it just comes on in the dusk absolutely beautiful no cords no wires it's just a very clean installation and that was what we were going for we cut and glued a soldier course of pavers all the way around the outside edge those are the very outer stones and then once those stabilized then we use those as our guide to screed the surface of the patio There's a ton of hours went into the detail work but actually when we're finished, it's just very organic, very comfortable. We've had big gatherings out here, birthday parties. All of the grandkids, when they ask them what they want to do on the weekend, they want to go over and play on Grumpy Splash Pads. So that's what you got going on. <laughs> what happened? I don't think so. Psych. You throw water on grace now. Oh, that's... <laughs> I love you. Water for me? That's fantastic. 
Thanks, man. There's so many things going on out here, I can't even take it. What is this guy doing? What are you making over here? A um, little different application of our normal processes. We're doing a rainwater capturement system, but it's actually going to be held inside the patio that we're getting ready to put together. So we poured this block wall. We're working on getting it poured solid right now. We did all the footers, all that stuff's in our past. We have all this soil right here. What we've done is we've sloped everything towards the center. We're getting ready to put a double row of aqua blocks in right here and an access panel. And then we'll fill this whole thing with gravel and put a patio on top. So what you'll be looking at is about uh, 4,500 gallons of water stored underneath the patio and we'll have it available to our access for whatever we want to do with it. We got everything cleaned up, got all the sharp rocks off the soil, um, raked it out smooth. We did a one layer of underlayment for a protective layer for our liner underneath. And then where we had our block walls along the sides, we doubled up extra underlayment, so we actually have a double to triple layer on the sides, a single layer in the bottom. We did that, we stretched out our 45 mil liner, and then we came in and we put back our aqua block. So this is our subgrade inside the liner. All the water that sinks in is all pitched down into this system. So every area in this patio pitches towards a central area, and then the water runs through these blocks underneath here into these vaults. Inside here will be that 50 tons of aggregate that we've got piled over there and uh, we, we'll start out with the larger uh, three to two to three inch stone that we have and then we'll go to a three quarter to inch and a half stone on top of that and we'll layer these aggregates out gradiently from big to small then when we get to the top we'll, we'll screed out a smaller pea gravel that our pavers will lay on top of the fountains will be cut down into the paver areas and then we'll sweep a nice small fine stone in between there. So we'll actually be able to capture all the water, the rainwater that falls on the patio will be trapped inside of it. Uh, you can see that we did a segmental retaining wall block here. And it curves around and goes up to my front door and you can kind of get the height that's about two foot high. We've got all the aggregate back filled in there right now. This rock over here is about 11 feet long. That's a 9,000 pound seating rock that we put in. We have pipes in the corners. Uh, we got one here, got one over there, and there's another one in the other corner over here. Those all run into one of these uh, pommel's vaults right over here. So the downspouts will be run into that. So we've got clean entry for the downspout water to run in in a place we need to clean out leaf matter. Then the other vault has all of the plumbing and everything for the lights. We've got three weathered limestone boulders up here. This one's about uh, three, and a half, three and a half feet tall. And then we got a shorter one and we got a big wide one there. That one's about four foot by four foot foot and a half tall. Great for the kids, they've already been playing on it. So we had to, uh, in the process, this whole wall to the outside edge, which is as high as four feet in the back, tied into my foundation of my house. That's a 12 inch block wall poured with solid concrete on a footer. Um, 40 by 40 liner went into the project and about 60 tons of aggregate from the bottom to the top. I figured to hold about 5,000 gallons of water and uh, that's it, man. That's what you got going on. So I'm getting ready to tamp in this last level with the compactor. We're getting ready to screech some more gravel out. Just wanted to get a close up in here. We've got uh, all of these edge blocks have all been cut and glued down. You can kind of see the, the different phases of what we have. Here we have the compacted smaller aggregate, the three quarter to inch and a half. 
And then here we're screeding our final grade of aggregate on top. Get that nice and flat all the way up to the top of our uh, finished grade. All of the edge blocks have been set with mortar around the edge here. They're glued around the outside edge the rest of the way. And then the pavers are laid and cut on top like what you're seeing right here. And then these guys just get a nice brush in of pea gravel in between and that makes the rainwater capturing happen and this is done and ready to walk on. I'm getting further into the day. I got a little shade. Look at how nice that's looking. You can see the big gaps with pea gravel. So we've got about a two inch layer of pea gravel down here in the bottom. And then underneath that is the three quarter to inch and a half. And then underneath that is the two to five. And we all know there's 100 tons of gravel in this patio. But when we get done, it is going to be immaculate. So you can see we're setting grade. We pull a string line all the way across to the other side. And then we set those pavers. And then that way we can screed pea gravel. And we compact the pea gravel. Then we screed another layer to get it really, really tight and close. And then once we've got them all laid in like this, we sweep more pea gravel into the crevices. And then we run the packer over it and that locks it all down. That's permanent. It's our second day of laying pavers, not counting the edging. We uh, got in here today and we crushed out all of those edge pavers around there. Cut those in, got them all glued down. That was our beginning. Then we came in and we started working on getting all our elevations right. So this entire patio is perfectly flat. There's no pitch on it anywhere because it can swallow up all the water that falls on it. So it doesn't have to roll away from the house. But the big challenge is, as we go in here, we screed out all this pea gravel, we sweep it out flat, pack it all down with the compactor, and then we have to come in and screed gravel over top of it again. So that keeps us nice and flat once we do our final. And we've got just all of these boulders and rocks in here, so we have constant curves and cuts, and we can't just like lay a pipe here and a pipe there and smooth everything out. We gotta wedge this little spot and that little spot. So everything's a challenge and it's very slow doing all the detail work in here. But the final product is gonna be awesome. We're super excited. We're working our way in this direction. We set a boulder over there this morning. We're gonna finish off the steps where you come in from the yard into the patio tomorrow. And we're gonna get all the pavers laid until we get down here into the difficult zone. So we're going to have to pour some forms in there and do some concrete work and really frame that in in order to disappear it. Day four today, day three, you can see what Nick and I got done. We started closing in on the vaults back here where we have to do a lot of detail work. Just kind of scoot it around. So today, I hope to get the rest of the pavers laid on this side of the patio. Get everything finished up on this side. We, uh, at the end of the day yesterday, we got all this remaining pea gravel set over here set a few accent boulders that one with the buckets gonna be the step down to the patio from the upper elevation so that's what we got good shot of it I fired the fountains up last night they were beautiful and glowing super happy today is day seven for me on the surface just been working edges gravel and shooting the surface of the entire patio. So here's what you have. The last two days I have spent building these pump vaults. One yesterday and one today. So I wanted to get a shot of both of these together because in a commercial application or an application where something extra special is important, this is just another level to take it. So what you're gonna see when this is all done, these fountains, are going to be disappearing into this patio and the pavers will just completely cover the vaults they are set at perfectly the same height and the pavers will lay right over top so there will be no sign of anything man-made the two by fours that are laid across the top of the pavers you'll see that i've notched the edges of the two by fours so that the the whole entire forms for the concrete are hanging at perfectly the right height so that we can just support the forms, pour the concrete in, and the top of the form is exactly the right height for the bottom of the pavers. That was a key thing that we did that really made it easy to get the forms in perfectly right. In the top of the forms, you're gonna notice that there's a square piece of plywood screwed into the form so that it actually, it, it protrudes down into the concrete. The purpose of that is, is that we had 3 8 inch stainless steel lids made 
for the vaults so that when we cover these things up, there's no movement, there's no sign of anything. And that we just knew would be eternal, it would last forever. And so those lids were used to cut those squares of plywood exactly the right size so that when we pull the forms off, you can rip those pieces of plywood out and the lid fits right down in exactly the right size, exactly the right height. That's what that was all about. Hopefully today is our last day on the patio. The last day I was out here, we got this all cut in around the boulder fountain. Got him tucked in, this guy's ready to go. We've got the vaults in. I gotta take out the forming out of the center of that second vault, get it cleaned up, and then the last little bit of compaction, and we gotta do all the all the edge work around these other two fountains and we're done. So hopefully today we put the wraps on it and we'll be ready to do detail work around the outside edge, get working on a wrought iron fence, etc. We have two conduits here and here that lead outside. This is how our pump cords all get in and out. They run out through the wall, through some bulkhead fittings and come out the other side to the electrical outlet. So none of this will be visible or accessible without doing a major amount of work to get to them. And that's intentional. So then what you have is a couple of pumps down in here. You got lighting wires that run through conduits that come up into the fountains. Uh, all of this leading to the mystery and the whole design of the thing, which you'll see later as well. And then we have a conduit that leads from this vault into that vault in case we decide later that we want to uh, add another pump in the other vault for whatever or something else that we need to do. So that vault is used strictly for all the inlets from the rainwater from the gutter system. So we've got one with debris coming in. So we've chosen to do a second vault that has all of our pumps in it so that we're not pumping garbage in on top of the pumps. And that's how the system works. So we're getting ready to put the uh, vault lids on top and do some finished grading work with the gravel. So here you're looking at it now with the two lids on. Those are 3 8 inch thick stainless steel plates. And we're going to gravel right up around them and, and paver right over top of them. So that's as simple as it gets. So here we have the vaults and we've brought up the aggregate around them and tamped everything in. We're getting ready to screed the, the last layer of gravel over top and lay the pavers. The final gravel, screed it in, flush with the vaults, pavers are being laid. So guys, I told you at the end of this video, I'd share with you the lessons that were learned, the mistake that I made. Even though we compacted gravel in here in the aggregates, the paver guys pretty much all told me round gravel won't work. Well, this has been here for years now. I've parked my motorcycle on it. I'm going to say round gravel works just fine. It may not be worthy for like heavy truck traffic, but as far as this goes, it's worked perfectly. But what I did notice after the fact is that even with all the compaction that I did with these gravels, these pavers all sunk down consistently about three eighths of an inch, a quarter to three eighths. So when I was screeding my final layers of gravel, I was using that notch two by four to get the gravel at the right height so that the pavers would lay in. What I would do differently is I would set my soldier course around the outside edge which is either glued down or set in mortar along the house on top of that footer, I would then notch that board so that all of my interior pavers were sitting that quarter to three eighths inch too high so that I can pack everything in and over the course of the first, it happened within a few weeks, everything settled consistently to that amount. If I would have set those higher, this thing would have settled in to absolute perfection instead of having that lip between the soldier course and the interior pavers. So when you guys put your patio together, make sure that you screed your gravel and set the interior pavers just a little bit higher and your project will be 100%. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe, all that business. You know what to do. I'm going to get busy doing something else. I'll check you all out later.